to Gaffer after back-to-back defeats, a positive result on Saturday with a win away to Altrinham, um, a great win on the road for us. Yeah, listen, the manner in which we've conceded the two goals in the second half ain't great. We've shipped seven now in three games, which is something that we spoke about and addressed because that's not what we're about. To go and concede two at Sutton, three at Yeovil and then two against Altrinham. But fundamentally, we'd lost back-to-back like you suggested. To go and win a, a, a game up at Altrinham was, was the main factor. I've watched the game back. We've controlled it superbly in the first half. And I've got to give Phil Parkinson a lot of respect. Instead of him doing the Kings Lynn and going 4-4-1 or the Barnet 4-4-1, he went 4-2-3, stuck it right on us and give himself an outside chance of getting a result. So in fairness to him, we probably should have changed our shape and gone to a back four slightly earlier to contain their front runners, but we didn't. And it was quite an open game. So in fairness, I'm just excited that we got the win. So you mentioned that it was an open game and probably one for the neutral, um, but good to get the win. But what was probably most pleasing was we looked like a threat. We looked like we was going to score goals on, on the afternoon. Yeah, you, you see, we, we took the lead 11 v 11. We were fortunate enough to double the lead after their man just got sent off, but we're getting bodies in good areas. Kane Smith scores from the right wing back role and Corey Whiteley scores from the left wing back role. We had Shaq's opportunity, Junior's off the bar, a couple of fizzed across the face of the goal. So yeah, we spoke about it. I said to, to you prior to going to Altrincham that we've had a good week in terms of from quarter to nine on Tuesday evening. I felt our second half against Yeovil was very good. We spoke a lot with the group. We've addressed a lot of issues where we feel that we need to get on the front foot and what's the impetus to going 3-0 down at Yeovil to come out and play of a tempo. And I felt that we did that. You look at the corners. We had four corners back to back on Saturday and it was three different takers. Junior took one, Corey took one and Ty took one because we were talking about having an energy and a tempo about getting the ball in play. So yeah, we are looking at front foot football. We are looking to get into people's faces because I feel that that's where we're at our best. So looking at the squad on Saturday, we only had 15 players available with only four named on the substitutes bench. Um, it seems like all players came out of that game unscathed, even though there were a few niggles. Um, are there any others who will be fit and ready for contention on Tuesday evening? Possibly two that will go into the squad. Um, yeah, make no bones about it. We've lost Mark Ricketts, our, our skipper, Tom Champ, club captain, Matt Reed, Zane Angol, Adam McDonald, and Pierre Mongoya. Six that have influenced this season. Good, bad, or indifferent, but they've all had a say this year. And to lose six out of your squad and to travel up to Altrincham with effectively a goalkeeper, two defenders, and Shaq. I think it makes even more in terms of the return of three points. So we're looking and hopeful that two will be back in for Tuesday evening. That's not me trying to fool anyone. It's genuine. We had two that trained today that will add to the group and add to the, the, the squad. So we're hopeful that that's the case. Like I said in my programme notes that, yeah, we've got contributors that are currently sitting in the, in the physio room with Steve and we can flip it and say what a positive that's going to be when we get them back fresh and firing with the running. And that's saying that I've looked at and yeah, could you go to the same well often and it, it can kill you in terms of the amount of games that certain people are playing back to back. But we're a fit group. We cater their week. They come in today. They've done their analysis. They went through their recovery, second day recovery. And yeah, we're ready to go against Bromley tomorrow evening. So many positives from the game, but one of the positives to come out of it was, I believe, Corey Whiteley and his performance. Um, he's starting to pick up that left-hand side role that was vacated by Sorber when he moved on to Huddersfield. Um, and a positive performance for him, and it was his first goal for the club, um, and hopefully the first of more to come. He could have scored a second, two little lollipops on the edge of the box against Malarkey, comes out and wraps it, just misses the far post. I thought he was very good against Yeovil. I thought he was very productive. And I felt that he's, yeah, added to his game. Could he be even more effective? Could he be even more front foot and uh, sort of drive at the fullback a little bit more? Of course, but he's finding his feet in that position. He's normally accustomed to picking the ball up 15, 20 yards higher up. And he's probably a little bit more different in terms of isolating a, a lone fullback. But where he picks the ball up and midfielder would recover, a right back, a right winger would recover. So he's got probably different aspects of how he's going to take on personnel. But... We're working on him and he's been a, a breath of fresh air since he's gone in there. So just looking at the season as a whole, and we're now returning to Meadow Park um, for two games on the bounce. 
Um, our away form has been um, hugely impressive. Um, out of um, the the away league table, we we currently sit second, whereas when looking at the home league table, we we sit nineteenth. Um, how important is it for us as a group that if we're going to make that mount for the the playoff positions that we improve that home form? Hundred percent. We've got a coach picking us up. We're doing a loop of the M25 driving us back round here with an hour and a half and thinking it's an away game. I've got to be honest, I don't know what it is. I, if I could put my finger on it, I'd be second or top because you can't go away from home and have the second best away record and travel to the likes of Torquay, to Bromley, to Hartlepool, to Notts County and pick up great wins and then come at home and, and lose games. So, yeah, we're trying to find the, the, the problem and, and the solution to, to improve our home record because as, as you suggest second and 19th half it you're sitting about 11th so that will kill us if we don't improve our home record that's something that we need to address but like I said I'm, 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 I'm more positive now I'm working with the mindset coaching Rob Blackburn and I'm saying that last Tuesday as of quarter to nine we've seen a difference in our play we've scored five goals we didn't score five in however many games leading up before that so we're a team that now we understand a little bit more of where we've got to get to to get the result and that's something that we've addressed and spoken about with regards to Bromley tomorrow night. Um, for me, Bromley was our biggest test. We went down there and I was buzzing to leave Hayes Lane with, with a point because they were big, strong, they were good at their jobs, all knew and expected from each other and yeah, they put it right on you. Both boxes is tough and I've watched them against Dagenham, I've watched them against Kings Lynn, I've watched them against Maidenhead and they're a different beast in all three. They bought in Colson, they bought in Bridge, which doesn't affect you as much as Rico Hackett, Fairchild or Alabi, but my God, they got quality and they can travel up the pitch. They got unbelievable guile. So yeah, we got to be right on it tomorrow. So you touched on Bromley there. And um, like you said, when we went to Hayes Lane earlier in the season, we were probably fortunate to take a, a point away um, from that fixture. Um, looking at the game now, um, Bromley sit... Uh, three points behind us and with a win they could leap for us is it one of those games that is, is similar to a Chesterfield here um, uh, an Orchardham here um, an Eastley here where um, these are the games that we have to take results on from um, more importantly to add to our, our um, points total but also to take away from any points total that our competitors may put on the board 100% listen it, it's we're playing against our playoff rivals. They'll have ambitions to leapfrog us on Tuesday evening. But you look, we need to start getting a run together. We need a December month like Eastley are having a February month. If you look at Eastley, they're top of the form guide. They come here prior to us. I believe they only won one game prior to coming to us. They then beat us. Then they go on a silly run and won four out of their last five. They've propelled themselves right up the division. And that's something that we need to do. If we can marry up results being a win against Ultron and a win against Bromley, it, it propels you up the level and then you can focus on Solio. But for us, we need to ensure that we're right at it. If we perform to the levels we know we can get to and have that impetus in our play and tempo, then, yeah, I say it week in, week out, we're a match for anyone. We went to them on Saturday and I felt we were dominant in that first half display. Did we come off the gas slightly? Yes, but that's why we all play and I manage at this level because of the inconsistencies that are thrown up every week. So for me, Bromley will provide a superb test. Like I said, Neil Smith Ammo will come here wanting to leapfrog us on Tuesday evening. We need to ensure they conform to us and how we want to play as opposed to us conforming to them.